We want to get back now to our big story, the investigation underway on excessive force in the Phoenix Police Department. Now our ABC 15 investigators are asking who these officers are in the video and what's their background, their history. Our own Melissa Blasey, M Melissa Blasey is finding out more for us tonight. The viral video everywhere. This police officer's kick pointing a gun at a car with little kids inside after a family was accused of shoplifting a doll. And there's another frame of video that caught the attention of the ABC 15 investigators. This one. Look at all of these officers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All responded to the scene in less than five minutes. What are their names and what did they see? How many of them were supervisors? A Phoenix police spokesman refuses to answer these questions. In fact, the only name that we know is Christopher Meyer. And that's because he's the only officer from this parking lot to write a report. Report. Phoenix police also refused to say anything about Meyer, how many years on the force, any prior disciplinary issues, even whether he's one of two officers now on desk duty during the Phoenix police internal investigation. Chief Jerry Williams made the rounds of TV news stations over the weekend. Uh, I'm sorry that this incident happened. I apologize to the family. I apologize to the to the community. She was pledging transparency. I think it would be different if we became aware of this and we did nothing and we just sat by and said, I'm sorry, I don't have any comment or I'm sorry I'm not going to do anything I'm going to let the investigation speak for itself the investigation will do that everyone's entitled to due process once we get to the truth we'll share that with the community members one day later her spokesmen are now clamming up about their officers the only thing they released today was this security video from the family dollar store showing the family walking out with that shoplifted doll in Phoenix I'm Melissa Blasius ABC 15 Arizona well, family dollar declined to press charges against that family as for the Phoenix police a spokesperson today assures us their internal investigation will be thorough and complete Again, the mayor is holding a community meeting tomorrow night in response to the claims of bias inside the Phoenix Police Department. More coming up this hour, including the Woodbury fire inching closer to populated areas. We've got neighbors on alert as crews try everything they can to stop the flames. And getting to the source of a health crisis, how Phoenix may get a settlement from big pharma companies because of it. Honestly, it's, it's a game changer. Like your energy level, you can notice a difference. The Miracle Cure becoming a boutique service, but does this IV bar really work to give you the boost you need? And student loan debt isn't just a young person problem. The number of older Americans weighed down by it and the lawmakers trying to erase the debt for millions. And it was our ninth straight day with temperatures 105 or greater here in the valley, but these temperatures are actually trending down in the coming days. We'll show you that in your most accurate forecast coming up. Going after opioid companies in a big way, a judge could soon approve a national settlement that would pay out cities and counties across the U.S. Under the proposed settlement, drug makers and sellers would pay for what local governments have had to spend on medical and emergency services related to the opioid crisis. Phoenix is one of 25,500 cities that could see some of the settlement money. The case is set to be back in court this month. Meanwhile, Arizona's attorney general also has two cases against opioid manufacturers. Insys and Purdue Pharma. Check the pantry. Ragu is recalling some of its popular pasta sauces. There may be pieces of plastic inside. It's a voluntary recall. It's for uh, chunky tomato, garlic, and onion flavor, as well as old world style traditional and meat flavors. The jars have best buy dates between June 4th and 6th of 2020. If you have a jar, throw it out, and you can call the company's customer service line for a coupon for a free jar. Kids known to touch everything, right? And more than 4,600 kids end up in the ER every year because of different cosmetic products that they've gotten their hands on. New study in the journal Clinical Pediatrics reveals it's been happening for the past 15 years. Nail polish remover was the most common problem, but also hair relaxers. Experts advise keeping your cabinets locked and products out of the reach of children. Getting an IV, not just something that's done at a hospital. Now people are trying these IV bars, breaking the way into cities across the country claims these fluids can do everything from easing your hangover to fighting fatigue. Kai Beach is finding out if it really does help your health. Three, two, one. 
go. It's a high intensity workout at Vital Strength and Fitness. Go on, guys. And as the sweat starts pouring, these athletes are looking for an edge. The quicker you, rec you can recover, the more you can train. The more you can train, the more you get better. <laughs> To help with his recovery, gym owner and former MMA fighter Vinny Lopez turns to IV therapy. It makes you feel superhuman, which is why it's, it's not allowed in mixed martial arts anymore because it kind of brings you back better than you felt before. Banned by some sports, but now coveted by many businesses. These bags of saline and vitamins are being marketed to give your body a big boost. This is our normal saline that we administer through the IVs. And now more people are paying between 20 to 200 bucks a pop to have these medical potions pumped into their bodies. Honestly, it's it's a game changer. This is the vein of former NFL cheerleader Erica Beard. Like your energy level, you can notice a difference. Erica is a mother of two. She gets an IV drip once a month at Denver Hydrate and says these vitamin cocktails help fight fatigue and improve her health. It helps with muscle recovery, so you know, and staying hydrated, it's not easy to drink as much water as we need to here. <laughs> From Nashville to Las Vegas, IV therapy bars like this are popping up across the country, providing a literal shot in the arm to everyone from weekend warriors to those nursing a hangover. But does it really work, or is this just a pumped up placebo? It really helps, you're gonna absorb 100% of the vitamins. ER trauma nurse Gianna Nardi administers IV drips on the side. Let's see which one's the best option. And fully supports what she's selling. Basic hydration. The Normal saline is the same pH as your blood, so you're just giving your body a really good drink. But many other medical professionals say they aren't worth the cost. They say symptoms people are trying to cure aren't caused by dehydration, and that most people can just drink the fluids that they need. Claims Erica disagrees with. I think it's funny that they think it's placebo. I mean, they can hate on it until they try it. <laughs> I'm Kai Beach reporting. All right, so we have something called a strawberry moon. Yes. Tonight. I've heard of a blue moon. Right. I've heard what? Yeah. Strawberry so we have a bunch of ridiculous names for the moon, depending <laughs> on whatever month it is. How do you really we feel? have a, a crow moon, a, a buck moon Harvest coming moon. up. Yeah, right, we, we've got them all. Moon. I think sure. earlier this year we had a super blue blood wolf yeah. moon. Tell so, me what, <laughs> what news producer came up with that name yeah. right there, right? Yeah. yeah so, it doesn't even fit on that little line at the bottom no, of the screen doesn't. ever either. Uh, th so the June full moon is considered the strawberry moon. I'm assuming it's because maybe your strawberries are uh, coming into a bloom. I, I don't know. That's probably what it is, right? But yeah, you can see the strawberry moon rising here over the eastern sky of the valley about uh, 8 12 this evening. You can also see Jupiter off to the right of the moon tonight and Saturn off to the left. If you're uh, looking out there, we should have clear skies for us uh, this evening and those temperatures eventually dropping down into the double, double digits here over the next hour or two. By tomorrow morning, we'll see those numbers dropping down into the low to mid 70s around the valley. So a pretty comfortable start to the day. And we'll be seeing those temperatures actually come down a couple of degrees tomorrow afternoon. We topped 105 today. We'll call for 103 tomorrow afternoon. That's actually below average now for a mid June. It's 99 currently in Mason, Apache Junction. The rest of the valley generally sitting in the low triple digits from 101 in Gilbert over to Chandler and Tempe. Uh, zooming out, taking a look at the rest of the state. It's 73 currently in Flagstaff. Feeling good in Sholo as well, right at 75 there. Below 102s from Bullhead City running down to Lake Havasu. So we have had a couple of weak disturbances rolling by to our north, helping to keep these daytime highs in check and they're also tapping into a, enough moisture to get a few isolated showers and thunderstorms going far northern sections of the state up along the north rim of the Grand Canyon today northern sections of Mojave County there and over uh, up along uh, north of the I-40 in uh, sections of Navajo and Apache County any moisture in the month of June certainly a welcome sight. We can do without those lightning strikes though. Tomorrow afternoon we're going to catch the tail edge of a, another disturbance here. So uh, northern sections of the state again, maybe a couple more of those isolated uh, showers and thunderstorms through the afternoon hours, even closer to the Utah border. I think by tomorrow, so even places like Flagstaff uh, staying dry here for the next several days. Temperatures there in the upper 70s and low 80s through midweek. Prescott, you'll be topping out with numbers in the uh, mid to upper 80s there. Here in the valley, our numbers dropping down to around 74 in Glendale tonight, 73 and 10. MP in Mesa should be on around 70 by Queen Creek uh, in Queen Creek early tomorrow morning. Then those daytime highs make it right back up around 104 in Gilbert Chandler. Some 103s there from Mesa over into Tempe. You'll top out around 102 in Glendale and we'll just kind of hover between 103 and 105 through the rest of this work week. Later this week though, Thursday and Friday, we have another dry storm system that's going to move through here. Kick up those winds, really raise the fire danger heading into the weekend as well. So keep that in mind uh, heading up north uh, this weekend. We could run into some red flag warnings as well. Those daytime highs here drop down into the low triple digits next weekend.
All right, thanks, JP. Student loan debt, more and more people are dealing with it for decades. And now some members of Congress are expected to take action, introducing legislation to eliminate it for millions of Americans. While most people think of student loan debt as a young person's problem, more than 3 million people over the age of 60 are paying off college loans. Uh, part of a plan by Senator Elizabeth Warren and Representative James Clyburn uh, would eliminate up to $50,000 of debt for 42 million people, wiping out debt for about 75% of borrowers. The plan is to pay for it with a 2% yearly tax on the richest 75,000 families in the country. Coming up, one song lyric, well, it sticks with you. Maybe more than one does. Lots of them do. Well, now Google is being accused of stealing information, so it's easier for you to look up. And it's never been easier to order food, but now restaurants are trying to get off one app. Uh, find out why they say it's harming their business. No rose ceremony, and now Hannah will need to make a choice. She's angry with Luke P after his last ditch effort on a one on one, and he's trying to find anything that'll keep him in the running. I'm, I'm shocked, confused. It never crossed my mind that I'm going to go home. I'm sorry. Find out what Hannah decides tonight at 7. That's followed by the all-new <laughs> show Grand Hotel, where professional and personal lives of the people in this five-star hotel in Miami are intertwined for excitement, love, and scandals. It all starts at 9, followed by ABC 15 News at 10. Okay, you ever hop online to search for the lyrics to a song uh, that's stuck in your head? Well, Google posts them right on the first page. You don't even have to click any other link. And while that's super convenient for everybody, apparently where they're getting their lyrics wasn't approved. The company Genius had accused the tech giant of stealing their lyrics. Google denied it. But Genius got smart. Listen to this. Putting apostrophes and quotes all in a sequence that uh, when they put Moore's code in, it actually spelled out red-handed. So then that same script turned up on Google's web page. Now, Google's placing the blame on a partner agreement. Flames raging across the superstitions and giving firefighters a unique challenge trying to get this fire under control. Celebration turns to chaos with gunshots at the NBA Champions Parade, the latest from Toronto Police tonight. And a disturbing arrest in northern Arizona as kids head off to summer camp. This is ABC 15 News taking action. A mom behind bars for leaving her own baby behind in a hot car. How long police say it took her to realize what happened? The Woodbury fire burning out of control in the superstition wilderness. The focus for firefighters as the flames inch closer to populated areas. But first, it's the video sparking outrage in the valley and really across the country. One week after we first showed it to you, the family who claims officers went too far now say, Enough apologies. Both Drayvon Ames and Aisha Harper say they want the officers involved to be fired and plan to file a $10 million lawsuit against the city and the police department. ABC 15's Carla Navarrete with what else the couple had to say now that the nation is listening. Millions have now watched this video from a Phoenix apartment parking lot last month. And with each view, the outrage seems to grow louder. Get out the this is what happened moments after Dravon Ames and Aisha Harper, along with their one and four year old kids, left a dollar store. It traumatized my whole family. According to a 16 page police report, the store manager alerted police that items, including underwear and a doll, were taken without being paid. My family has been through enough. And you see in the video the fear, the sounds of my daughter is crying, and you ask me about some draws. And police putting guns into my daughter's faces and you asked me about some draws. One of Dervon's lawyers telling us Dervon didn't take the items like the report says. But let's just assume everything was true in that 16 page report. It still would not justify the horrific barbarism, barbaric action of this police department. In this case, there was no police video. All of the video captured by witnesses. Over the weekend, Mayor Gallego pledged that by August, every precinct will have body cameras. When the officers became aware that people were recording them, do you think that helped to de-escalate the situation? I think that saved us from all That's getting right. killed. That's right. Just a little bit. He still felt like he can do what he wanted because there's videos of people getting shot on camera all the time. 
but that saved us from getting killed, I believe. Also over the weekend, Chief Williams apologizing for the officer's unprofessional behavior. I'm sorry that this incident happened. I apologize to the family. I apologize to the to the community. The family not buying it. It's not sincere. It doesn't feel genuine at all. It is important to mention that both Ames and Harper did not get arrested on that May 27th day, and they are not facing any criminal charges. Reporting at Phoenix Police Headquarters, Carla Navarrete, ABC 15, Arizona. Carla, thanks. Phoenix City Council members refusing to sit down with us, though some did send statements responding to the controversy. The Phoenix Law Enforcement Association president also issuing statements saying accountability needs a thorough fact based investigation, an investigation that's not yet complete. In part, the statement reads such guesswork is not fair to our members or the members of the public who were involved in this incident. Moving forward, we hope reason and calm will soon become part of this community conversation. In her interview with us on ABC 15 Mornings just yesterday, Chief Williams said the precinct where this confrontation happened will be the next to get body cameras. We wanted to dig deeper into that neighborhood and see what kind of history Phoenix Police has there. Officers followed the family to an apartment complex near 36th Street and McDowell that falls within Phoenix's Mountain View Precinct. It's a 24 square mile patch of the city divided into smaller squad areas for more effective patrolling. According to our records dating back to 2016, there have been six police shootings in the squad areas closest to that traffic stop. Some of those cases started with domestic violence or armed robbery but all of them ended when the suspect was killed. You can read more about those cases on ABC15.com. You can also count on us to stay on top of this growing controversy as police continue to investigate this potential use of excessive force. We're digging into the department's history with this issue and the steps leaders are taking to change the culture. Five families without a home after an apartment fire spreads to neighboring units. Phoenix firefighters say when they arrived, there was a plume of black smoke over the apartment building near 43rd Avenue in Glendale. One person was taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. A neighbor heard screaming and crying, ran over to help a woman and her four children escape. Yeah, I tried to get, some, get a fire hose to put, them, put the fire out, but the fire, I got a short one, but it wasn't long enough. So the fire department got here, so they, they did it. An AC unit collapsed into one of the apartment units. No firefighters were hurt. Could take a while for investigators to find out what sparked the flames. A Valley mom says she was distracted when she left her five month old in a car parked outside a Goodyear Target for nearly an hour. Stacy Holly is now behind bars, charged with child abuse and endangerment. Police say she got her six year old daughter out of the back seat, but couldn't explain why she forgot the baby sitting just feet away. Holly and her sister guess the baby was in that car with no shade nor air conditioning for about 30 minutes while they shopped. But surveillance footage shows they didn't go back to the car for 50 minutes. Another mark on Hacienda Healthcare's records, maggots found in a patient's bandage months after a patient with disabilities gave birth after being raped. And tonight, the state filing a notice of intent to revoke the facility's license issued less than two months ago as part of a new state law. The State Department of Health Services says it does not want to close the facility, but would be a patient's last resort. A former employee saying this is not the first time something like this has happened at Hacienda. I know of two other cases in the time that I was there, so if, if, we're be, if this is being portrayed as shocking and they've never seen it before, that's not true. Hacienda can now request a hearing. Otherwise, in 30 days, the state will revoke their license on July 13th. Meanwhile, Governor Doug Ducey says he's confident the Department of Health Services will clean up the mess at Hacienda. The incident that's being discuss discussed is uh, something that w w we're, we're certain uh, can be fixed, uh, but there's, there's more to be done here. He says his first priority is ensuring the safety and health of patients inside Hacienda. Thousands of acres in the Superstition Wilderness now gone as the Woodbury Fire burns through the rugged terrain. It's posing some serious challenges for those on the front lines. ABC 15's Cameron Pullum explains what they're facing as the flames destroyed nearly enough land to cover the entire city of Glendale. What would normally be a quiet summer day inside Peralta Trail Elementary? Go ahead and give us a call. That's what it's for. Is now bustling with action. Just 25 miles north, a raging wildfire is taking a bite out of the superstition wilderness. We have over 700 personnel 
assigned to this fire. That's along with a half dozen choppers dumping water, one air tanker attacking from the sky with flame retardant, and two bulldozers turning up fire lines wherever possible. There are different tactics and strategies that are going on depending on where these resources are located around the fire. One area of focus centers on the flames now creeping onto state land near private ranches. If it had some kind of momentum, they do know that there are communities further on out that they do not want that fire to reach. The terrain offers its own challenges, especially when it comes to carving out fire lines. Normally dug out by hand or heavy equipment, the ground in the area is layered in hard rock and boulders. The normal tools the firefighters generally use to build a fire line aren't effective in boulders. Making it crucial to choose their spots carefully. Now consuming nearly 38,000 acres access to Canyon Lake, Apache Lake, and Tortilla Flats remains cut off. According to this tweet, the Tortilla Flat Restaurant and Saloon, a mainstay for visitors, is closed down. Backburning around Tortilla Flats has already taken place with firefighters standing by in case the winds shift. If we can hold what we've got or keep working to mitigate that fire spread, that's what we'll continue to focus on. I'm Cameron Polum, ABC 15 Arizona. Cameron, thanks. With summer camp season in full swing, a disturbing discovery in northern Arizona. Navajo County Sheriff's deputies arrested a 19-year-old camp counselor for child molestation. A 10-year-old reported Noah Paradis saying that, saying that they were touched inappropriately three separate times. Paradis was arrested, but the next day, two other kids came forward with more allegations. A 16-year-old girl shot and killed east of Chino Valley. Police say Jonathan Rice had a gun and was firing randomly. One of those rounds hit Anisha Williams in the head, killing her. An off-duty officer found the teens, but because there was no cell service, it took a while for backup to arrive. Rice has been charged with second degree murder. Water flowing once again at the state prison in Yuma. The Department of Corrections says pump failures limited water for 4,300 inmates at the prison complex, but those pumps have been repaired. This comes after the state prison in Douglas lost water for three days because of problems with the county's supply. Well, you may have watched the Toronto Raptors win the NBA Finals last week here on ABC 15, but today the team's celebration cut short after shots were fired in the city's streets. Police found four people shot. They're all expected to survive. Toronto's police now have three people in custody. The FAA could soon start testing 737 MAX 8 jets to make sure Boeing has fixed the issue that led to two deadly crashes in the last year. This comes as Boeing executives apologized for the crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia. Some victims' families say they hope the apology will help them in lawsuits against Boeing. Well, our temperatures are finally trending down this week, but the winds are going to pick up and so is the fire danger. We're timing out some changes in your most accurate forecast next. Pretty soon the skies over Arizona will be lit up. Well, like this from monsoon storms, a seasoned storm chaser sharing his tips for capturing these awesome monsoon moments. Delivering to your doorstep without the restaurant's permission, what you should know before ordering from a third party app. Well, baseball players uh, you often wear a suit and tie when they travel to and from games, but it's not often you see them wear a tie on the field. Governor Doug Ducey honored today by the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He received the 2019 Milton Friedman Award, named for the Nobel Prize winning economist who believed in free markets with little government interference. Chamber praised Ducey for growing the state's economy while reducing regulations. Arizona, it seems, is one of the worst states in the nation when it comes to the well-being of our kids. That's according to the latest Kids Count report from the Anna E. Casey Foundation. The study looks at more than a dozen factors from education to health and safety. Arizona ranked 46th overall with poor performance in childhood education.